Welcome to Proud Fertility. I'm Nathan Chan, the Managing Director of Proud Fertility. And today we are here with two very proud new intended parents, dads, and their little baby. Can you show off your yes, little baby? Girls. What's the little girl's name? Yes, her name is Louise. What's her name? Louise. Louise. Yes. And she's just yeah. asleep. She's asleep, yes. <laughs> just, just joking. Well, she's quiet there, but her daddies are going to share with us some of their experience. And, and today we have how many? Three tips. You have three tips, and a little bit will maybe be in French, a little bit or most of it will be in English. So let's go right ahead because you've learned a lot over the two and a half, three years you've been with Proud Fertility. So first of all, um, let's go to our first tip. I'll say it in French. Avoir des attentes réalistes. Have realistic expectations. So how did you come to egg donation and surrogacy and have you talked to other intended parents from other countries or other proud intended parents? Yes, uh, we did. I supported uh, other intended parents before being uh, myself an intended parent and I learned a lot of their own experience and uh, it, helped, it helped me uh, on my own journey. And uh, some intelligent parents told us that we had to go step by step um, because um, in French, uh, uh, pas après pas, parce que tout simplement, uh, si on se projette trop loin, uh, le parcours nous paraît très très long. Et c'est très important pour le stress aussi uh, d'y aller uh, pas après pas. So, very long journey, step by step. And that's very good. Now, I know you have some funny, you're, you're, it's very difficult for you to say that word, idealize. So you can say that in French and then explain it to us. <laughs> idealize. 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 <laughs> so you said that a lot of people it idealize the relationship with the surrogate. So try it in French and English and explain it to us. Uh, oui, beaucoup de parents d'intention que nous avons uh, pu rencontrer ont tendance à idéaliser la relation avec, uh, avec la mère porteuse. Mais en fait, la mère porteuse, elle a une vie, elle a sa famille, elle a ses enfants, et il est important de communiquer avec elle euh, pour savoir euh, quelles sont ses attentes, euh, quelle est son organisation dans sa journée, pour pouvoir échanger de manière sereine avec elle. Euh, et donc c'est pour ça qu'il ne faut pas idéaliser la relation et prendre en compte les besoins et les attentes également de la mère porteuse. Exactly. And really, the, the surrogate mother is not an employee. No, she's she's not. She, your friend, your angel. So she's not, like, she's not really like reporting to you as if you are the chef. So you were just saying that um, the surrogate has her own family. How many kids does your surrogate have? Four. Four, right? Yeah, four, yeah. Four kids, her own life, her own job yeah, she worked. Exactly. And so you were kind of like, didn't want, like a lot of people idealize this relationship, uh, thinking that it's supposed to be like a daily interaction thing. So what did you end up doing? Did you communicate with her? In what way? Um, we communicate with her by text uh, once per week. Uh, we have a long message, uh, but um, it was our organization with her, uh, and it works well. Uh, we had we built uh, a very very good uh, uh, relationship, and uh, now uh, we consider us as a team. And it was very important uh, to to build uh, this relationship with her. As part of having realistic expectations. You are the one that did a lot more understanding and realization. So is there a chance that, I mean, do all intended parents have um, embryos if they use an egg donor or make embryos with their own gametes? Like, 100% yes. people get embryos, correct? Yes. Uh, no. No, not 100%. There is a chance that there is no embryos. We are lucky because we had embryos at the first time. But we know that uh, there is a chance that it doesn't work. And that is very, very scary for some intended parents yes. and very worrying. Yeah. Now, the other statistic, and I think you have a hard time um, accepting this, is what is the percentage of success in the terms of achieving pregnancy for each embryo transfer attempt? Yeah. I think it's about 50%. Come on, come on, how much? In the French? 50%. Okay, c'est environ 50% de chance d'arriver au bout. 
So it's about 50% chance of achieving pregnancy, and that's, that's a hard number to accept. So um, that probably leads to, you know, I'm wondering if you are willing to talk a little bit about this hard topic. We've had many intended parents on Proud Fertility Channel, but let's talk about money, is that okay? Yeah. Okay, yes. so you guys spent a little bit of money, a lot of money, all your money. Um, a lot of money. We spent a lot of money. <laughs> Uh, we sold our flat and we... Oh, wait, 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 you can uh, say that in French too. Oh, uh, donc nous avons vendu notre, notre, notre appartement et on a également euh, changé quelques habitudes que nous avions dans notre vie tous les jours. Donc on a arrêté d'aller au restaurant, euh, on a arrêté d'aller au cinéma, on a également euh, arrêté certains euh, abonnements euh, de télévision euh, ou de, de communication pour pouvoir euh, euh, bah, économiser et, euh, et financer, euh, financer euh, ce parcours. Thank you very much for, bearing, for sharing. My limited French just understood that he was saving and reusing toilet paper. You stopped, <laughs> you stopped eating cheese. You stopped yes. traveling. Essentially, you made a change in your yeah. lifestyle. And you, I guess, I think you sold your flat to your apartment. Yeah. And then now you live somewhere else that is a little bit more affordable. And have, but the most important thing is you have a baby. Yeah. <laughs> And so, I mean, that really was what I think you said something earlier to me about it's like your only choice or something like this. Yes, it's like, yes, it's our only choice. So we decided to go and to do it. Okay, so I think at one point, did you say something about how you needed another circuit or something like this before in your own journey? Yes, because uh, we had two failures uh, and the embryo transfer. And uh, at the second failure, we didn't know if we if we need a second surrogate, and um, it was very scary for us. Okay. And then so financially, um, so actually you had one failed transfer, you had a chemical pregnancy, yeah. which is a little bit different from just a stark negative. Mm -hmm. But then you also had um, this you know point in time that you might have actually needed a new surrogate. So that comes with more expenses. Now, is it different for you as an international independent parent? Are there additional costs for you in mind or things that you might want to share online? There are additional costs because we need to have a newborn insurance uh, and it costs a lot uh, to have this, uh, this insurance. Um, we have travels to, to go to Canada as well uh, because we had to stay to, in Canada for six weeks. So travel and uh, renting a flat and so on. Yeah. It's a good six weeks. You've enjoyed yeah. your Canadian dream. Yeah. Now you're going home in two days. So yeah. Yeah. congratulations. And you'll be going yeah. home yeah. with Louise. Okay, so that brings us to the point of our tip number one. Our tip number two is... Say it in French, please. Soyez patient. Be patient. Okay, tell us in French a couple of the scenarios that you have to be patience and time that you had to wait. On a dû être patient tout d'abord pour euh, avoir une donneuse d'ovule. Euh, euh, ça prend du temps. Euh, ensuite, il y a euh, le temps d'avoir les ovules. Il y a le temps d'avoir les embryons. Euh, on attend également pour avoir les, les résultats des tests de ces, de ces différents euh, embryons. Ah, oui. Euh, so that was, she was talking about how to get wait for an egg donor. The process is uh, quite a long time. It's about two, three days for yeah. getting an X. Yeah. Not two, three days. Two, three months. Three, four months. Okay, you had to get the eggs, um, results of the egg retrieval, results of the embryos. You guys also opted for genetic testing of embryos, so you were waiting again yeah. to find out if the embryos were genetically normal. Mm -hmm. And then now you're going to tell us a little bit more about other times you have to wait. Yes, we had to wait. Um, for uh, to find a surrogate, and uh, it was quite quite, uh, quite long to, to find a surrogate. So in French, ça a été assez long pour nous uh, de trouver une mère porteuse, et, uh, et en fait, on a été assez triste parce que uh, ça demande beaucoup d'efforts, ça demande uh, de créer une vidéo pour se présenter, ça demande de remplir un profil, et uh, on s'est présenté uh, à deux uh, mères porteuses, deux surrogates qui ont refusé notre profil et, et, et pour ça on a été un, un peu triste. Et, euh, 
So they're just saying that they're really sad. They were sad when they had, you know, a couple surrogate that kind of rejected you or just didn't choose you as the intended parent and it made you sad. And but how did you you just moved on and you waited. Yeah. And so for every intended parent there will be a surrogate. There are way more intended parents than there are surrogates. But again, if you soy a patient, mm -hmm. you're going to find the surrogate eventually. And then that time period that you're waiting is just a long distance you know, in, in part of your memory. Okay, so waiting for the surrogate. Then you have a surrogate, she has get medical screening, gets a legal contact in place, and um, now you are waiting for the embryo transfer. How long time does it take in French and in English? It takes about how long? For the embryo transfer? Um, it was one week, two weeks, three two weeks. weeks. It's two weeks. Yeah. Yes. And you get it three times, yes. so. Yes, c'était deux semaines d'attente uh, pour avoir les résultats uh, des Français avant le Donc Donc uh, c'est deux semaines qui sont assez stressantes parce qu'on pense beaucoup à ça. So three embryo transfers, each of those times you had to wait two weeks. Mm -hmm. That's six weeks of your life, you're just hanging on like, right. oh my gosh, <laughs> are, are we pregnant, are we pregnant, are we pregnant? Yes. And your second embryo transfer was a chemical pregnancy. Um, I'm going to quickly share with people what that means, or you can say it in French. Chemical pregnancy is you got pregnant, but you didn't. En fait, sur le deuxième transfert, le premier test sanguin indiquait que notre mère porteuse était enceinte. Et en fait, il y a un second test sanguin qui est fait quelques jours plus tard, une semaine après. Et en fait, sur le deuxième deuxième test sanguin, elle n'était plus elle n'était plus enceinte. So, um, how did you, what are some strategies that you tell people how to be patient? Do you just... So I read it in French. Uh, uh, C'est important de, uh, en fait, de garder son mode de vie, de garder uh, uh, des occupations, uh, de faire, uh, de, de mener votre vie comme si, uh, comme si ce projet était, uh, était un, peu, un peu à part. Uh, il faut se concentrer sur votre vie de tous les jours. Euh, c'est important, c'est ce qui vous permet de ne pas être tout le temps dans l'attente euh, et de continuer à vivre votre vie et de continuer à faire d'autres projets. Euh, et c'est très important de ne pas, de pas focaliser que, que sur ce parcours. So on your journey, basically keep yourself occupied. Yeah. You know, you kind of basically have to continue living your life because you don't need to put everything on hold just for surrogacy and egg donation. And I think you said kind of do other things, um, dare I say healthy distractions, or maybe have other projects that, that may also stimulate your mind off of just surrogacy as well. Yeah. Right? Is that exactly. what you're trying to say? Exactly. Okay, let's go on to our last and third point. Again, en français, premièrement, bénéficier d'un soutien émotionnel. Have emotional support. Okay, so having emotional support is a very general statement. Um, let's talk about your sad stuff that you had, because you had a lot of sad things going on in the first part of your surrogacy. So you had a, a failed transfer, which was just a stark negative. Your HCG beta was zero. Mm -hmm. Another failure you had was a chemical pregnancy. We just talked about that. So talk a little bit about how did that make you feel, and was there anything that you did wrong in terms of I'm having emotional support. Did you tell somebody yes. or whatever? So yes. So we had to accept failures. So we have to accept the different failures that can be presented during during this journey. And for us, in fact, on the first essay, we made an error. It's that we told all our close friends, family and family, we gave the date of the transfer, and we had to really implicate in this first transfer. Only as it failed. Il a fallu transmettre cette information à tout le monde et ça a été vraiment, vraiment très difficile pour nous d'avoir à annoncer, à annoncer ce, cet échec. Um, basically, you're just saying you announced to your friends and family yeah. initially for your first embryo transfer attempt when exactly the embryo transfer was happening and then you basically said that it was very challenging because everybody was wanting results and asking you what happened. So, um, was that a mistake, or would you do it again? Or, and what did you do for the other transfers? No, we didn't do it. 
on a vraiment fait attention euh, pour les autres euh, transferts, justement, à garder euh, ça pour nous et, euh, et à bien attendre, surtout bah, lorsque le, le troisième transfert, bah, notre mère porteuse, a été enceinte. On a décidé d'attendre que le troisième mois de grossesse soit passé pour pouvoir l'annoncer à tous nos amis et toutes nos familles. So you guys didn't announce, so they chose to tell everybody the first transfer that didn't go so well because everybody, um, basically, if I can say, by telling everybody, it actually amplified the disappointment. Uh, your advice and what you ended up doing was that you didn't tell people about it on the second transfer, and on the third transfer, you only actually told people when your surrogate was on some three months. Yes. And so there are some disadvantages and advantages of telling people that late too. Um, but I guess maybe a good tip for you is to figure out what works for you and your emotional support. Like if you tell them in the beginning, there are advantages and disadvantages, and then be prepared for the consequences of it, whether it working out positively or negative with your emotional support group. And um, how did you accept your failures? Um, ça, you can say that in French as well too. Yeah. Uh, en fait, personnellement, moi, j'ai uh, une thérapeute uh, que je vois régulièrement et elle m'a été d'un grand soutien justement uh, dans ces périodes difficiles. Et, et pour moi, ça a été, uh, ça m'a ça, ça, ça sauvé émotionnellement uh, de pouvoir la voir uh, régulièrement, de la consulter régulièrement. Et, euh, et de pouvoir avancer et, euh, et d'accepter aussi, euh, finalement, euh, quelque chose que euh, la plupart des gens traversent, finalement. So, accepting failures is something that you worked with. Um, it's not really anybody's fault. Mm -hmm. That's what you said. Um, and then I think you said something about how you have basically used a therapist yourself and accepting yeah. and using a therapist. Do you have any last words to say? Um, for example, thank you or um, your experience. Do you want to sign off of that? Do you want to say anything else at the end? Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. We are very happy to you because we are yes. very happy to have our visit with. We are very grateful to have uh, opportunity. And We're very grateful for you as part thank of Pride Fertility and thank you so much to all the surrogates, especially Louise's little surrogate or little Louise's surrogate and your egg donor. So without the egg donor or the surrogate, um, these two gentlemen would not be proud little daddies. Nobody's a little, they're not little daddies, but they wouldn't be proud daddies of little Louise. So thank you so much. How do you say thank you in French in all the different ways? Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. See you later. Yeah. A bientôt. Yeah.